Someone's, uh, someone's stuck little eyes on the acorn. Because I camped here literally 10 minutes. Come on. Oh, we're out bright and early. It's, uh, it's about half past seven. Um, and we're off. We've started. And here is the old nice head, which is at the beginning of the Penine Way. And there's the first way marker. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. Someone's uh, someone stuck little eyes on the acorn. <laughs> Brilliant move. Oh, I know it's vandalism, but come on, that's quite cool, isn't it? Come on, love. Breath. That's uh, Jacob's lather done, and uh, as you can see, getting quite a bit of height. Uh, well, we're up by some of the uh, rock formations now, and oh, they are spectacular. Look at that. We're six and a half miles in now, and um, I think it's time for a break. We've probably got somewhere in the region of about 10 miles left, I think. It's about half 11. Um, heading towards Torside Reservoir. Um, there's a campsite there, but we'll see how it goes. I may well campsite. Campsite? I'm going on tired, eh? Uh, I may well wild camp before we get to the reservoir, but I'll kind of just see how the land lies. and. Look at the state of this one. Look at it. Don't jump off of me. Covered in mud. Go on. Unfortunately, she looked at some of this stuff here. If you can see the black, what looks like mud just there. Well, it's not. It's a bog. And she sunk in it. And basically, Paddled the way out. I'd have been able to get there, but gotta be careful on these paths. So I'll be keeping a closer eye on it. No. <laughs> Cora's not phased by it at all. She's trying to use this long grass as a, a flow. So yeah. Whoa, I knew it was gonna be buggy, but. Uh, I <laughs> didn't quite envisage it being this buggy just on the path. Uh, again, clags in, it's miserable. What, what, what's it about the Penine Way? Sorry about the close up, I've got this on a lanyard, you see the camera. It's, it feels much more remote um, and isolated than, than like the coast to coast or Cumbria Way or West Hallam Way because you're actually out. Um, oh. You don't see a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, of course you're out. But yeah, now it feels really remote. In a good way though. time in uh, quite a while that I've not been in the clag. Uh, clear skies, it's brilliant. I'm even on a bit of a path as well. Things are looking up, eh?
Cheers. We're at Crowden Camping and Caravan uh, Club site. Uh, another, another mishap, if you like. Uh, last night, me, come on, my sleep mat, sleep pads, whatever you want to call it, kept on deflating. Um, so this morning, I had it in a, a sink in the washing up room, looking for the hole. Uh, I found it. I've put a patch on it, hopefully in the right place. I couldn't find my pen to mark it, but I think it's in the right place. Uh, I'm loath to inflate it fully, but if I've missed it, I've got a good idea where it is now, and I've got another patch in the bag anyway. But uh, hopefully I'll have a slightly more comfortable sleep. Although, if I'm honest, I didn't sleep too badly. I, uh, I'll just get through this case. <laughs> Come on, love. Go on. Bear with me a second. Yeah, so I, I've got a, one of those really kind of wafer thin, uh, ultra light uh, sleep mats, you know, the foam ones. Well, I've got one that's cut down for a, a seat mat, and I uh, sometimes use it for coral if it's really cold. So, what I did, I put that and I put my insulated jacket kind of under the pad where my hip is, and uh, I didn't get too cold actually, it wasn't too bad. So, uh, all told, not such a bad night. Beautiful day, sun shining, um, everything's good in the world, and we're heading for Marsden today. Um, hopefully, there's a pub there we can camp at. Let's give it a little touch, there we go. No time to linger though, gotta keep on going. Cora, get down. No, get down. No, I know that dog's frightening you, isn't he? Hey, she's naughty. Yeah, yeah, she's naughty, isn't she? Stepping into a puddle. It wasn't a puddle, it was way deep. She's on the lead, so I kind of caught her before her head went under and pulled her out. But uh, she's a bit of a mucky pup now. Oh, and you. And that water doesn't look too great for cleaning it, so. I've just turned up at the coach house in, and unfortunately, the inn is closed now. Um, it's no longer a bar. However, they do still allow camping, um, £15 for the night, and there's showers and facilities, and somewhere to charge electrics as well, so it's great. Um, it's. Uh, about 15, 16 miles from uh, Crowden, but it's a nice little spot. Got back at it, uh, just rejoined the Penine Way, and we're heading to hopefully Hebden Bridge. So let's see what. Uh, whoa. <laughs> let's see what today has in store for us. All right. There we go. Touch the trig. Oh, there's a little sign. Look. Um, I don't know if you can make it out, I'll, I'll try and get a close up. It says the most easterly point in the county of Lancashire.
or being suspended 50 foot above loads of uh, heavy traffic. <laughs> Right, back to a bit of peace and quiet on the Pennine Way. There you go. Ah, oh, this is a slog. That's, uh, I mean, if you have a look, we've gained a bit of height. We came from right over that way. But uh, we're going up at the moment and uh, we put legs are screaming out. But uh, we're nearly at the top of this now and then. I think it's uh, just undulating the rest of the day, thankfully. It's Cora, the peanut butter snack, and um, I've got my chicken cup of soup. So we're going to have a little break now. The peanut butter wasn't enough. Cora's now having some chicken flavoured copper soup. And I think she likes it. So, thunderstorms were forecast for this afternoon. And they're here, wet weather gear's on. And Rains off. It's uh, probably only lasted about maybe 40 minutes. Last time really heavy, but it's off now. So hopefully it stays away. I feel like all I'm doing is talking about the weather. Um, we're now on this uh, cinder path, I suppose you'd call it. I'll show you. And uh, my understanding is that this goes on for quite a few miles now um following this water I don't have to. it's uh quite a impressive structure isn't it it's uh obviously seen it on the tv a few times and uh really doesn't do it justice because uh wow it's humongous <laughs> about mile 18 and uh, not ashamed to say this is the hardest day hiking backpacking I've ever had um, hopefully we're near somewhere we can camp about 20 minutes or so but uh, I'm done in <sighs> see you in a bit that was 21 miles today um, Murab pub um, which allows camping uh, it's not far from May's uh, Aladdin's cave it's in the same village uh, I just can't remember the name of it because I'm absolutely done in so we're rested and Cora's paws seem fine I've given them a good coating of musher wax and uh, I think we're good to go relatively short day today I think it's about 10 11 miles which will be nice uh, we're going to head over to uh, Maze Aladdin's cave now because I could do with picking up some supplies. Uh, a little bit late starting to be honest, it's half nine, usually away by about um, half seven, eight o'clock I think. But uh, anyway, it is what it is, we're going to crack on. Ooh. May's shop sells out that once and camping. There we are, Mary's farm shop. So we're just at the famous May's uh, shop and I've got a mug of coffee and I've got some carrot cake and I've got a dog who thinks both of her hair. It's an amazing shop, it really is. 
if you're ever on the Pennine Way, you've got to come here. So it's beautiful. And a spot to uh, have a rest, and there's a bench up here. <laughs> Car is here, yes, she's pulling. She obviously thinks there'll be people with food. Had to sit down and my legs don't want to start moving now. So this uh, derelict, come here, building here is the farmhouse associated with Wuthering Heights. Um, made famous from the Kate Bush song. <laughs> I'm only joking, I know it's a novel. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'll, I'll, let's have a look at this. This farmhouse has been associated with Wuthering Heights, the Ernest, sorry, Earnshaw home in Emily Bronte's novel. The building, even when complete, bore no resemblance to the house she described, but the situation may have been in her mind when she wrote of the moorland setting of the Heights, uh, 1964. Uh, so basically people think that this is the farmhouse but it isn't uh, and it's got absolutely nothing to do with Wuthering Heights whatsoever but So just take a look at where I'm camping Pond and Mill campsite look. My delicate stuff. So I'm gonna uh, get all my stuff set up in the tent and take a shower and I'll speak to you all soon. Good morning, it's uh, six o'clock and uh, I just make myself some porridge. Yeah. I've got some uh, milk and honey to put in with that. And uh, it's pretty much done. So I'll put my hot water on to boil now to make a coffee. Don't know what my noise was. Oh, look how beautiful she is, or he is. I'm not, oh, peacock, how beautiful he is. Wow. She's found mud. <laughs> Go on, you, you scruff bag. Just got a quick shot. Some beautiful Highland coos there <laughs> staring at me and Cora. So we're gonna get gone. Oh, right, let's see what this says. Dogs to be on lead. Yeah, check. Please close the gate. Ah. Hmm, maybe not as straightforward. Come on. We're, um, <coughs> we just made our way across um, Tops back there, um, really buggy. <laughs> My feet are wet, but that's the plan really with the uh, on us. And uh, we're going to be heading down towards Cowling now, and uh, just come across these buildings. So there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's this stone house here. Um, it's not marked on the map as a bothy or anything, so. Uh, I'm, I'm presuming it's just some sort of derelict house, but uh, 
we'll get close and see what we can see. This has been locked in the past and not now. Come here, full of, let me see, bits of wood and such like. I think it's all locked up though. Have a look. Yep. So there are actually a few little uh, wooden cabins or place down here. I'm wondering if they've got something to do with the shooting season maybe. Um, quite cool to stay in one though, wouldn't it? Doesn't matter what the weather is, I'm going to moan, it's really hot. <laughs> um, potentially got another seven, eight miles to go, um, but we'll see. There's possibly one or two places that are a couple of miles closer, so we'll just play, uh, play it as it comes along, if that makes sense, and see how we get on. I haven't been chatting much today because I've been trying to push on a little bit. Uh, so I'm sorry if there isn't as much footage as normal, but uh, I've got to try and crack on a little bit today. of the day just looking over there there's what appears to be a water source so if I get a bit stuck we can always come back and come up here somewhere but hopefully we won't so we'll crack on so I've just uh, found a campsite um, Thornton Hall uh, caravan and camping site and uh, it's about I think it's about a mile and a half away so I think in total we've done about 15 miles today. Um, I'm not going to push on that extra couple of miles to Garsgrave because I'm not even sure if there's a campsite and I don't particularly want to be wild camping. Um, come on! Sorry, Cora, stop having a drink. I was just waiting for it. Yeah, uh, I'd like to get on a site if I can. So. Uh, we booked there, apparently it's some sort of uh, hall place, you know, where they have like animals and stuff, but there's also a campsite, so we're heading there, and uh, I'll let you know what it's like. Right, so we're at our campsite, and um, big shout out to the amazing couple that I've just met who are camping next to us at Thornton Hall. So kind, I mean really kind. Um, Give me a couple of cans of cider and watched Cora while I went and had a bath. And just just a lovely pair of people, a couple of people that are even charging me electrics for me. So thank you. Uh, I doubt you'll ever watch me videos, but nonetheless, I want to say that. And I'm going to make a curry now and then go to bed. So I will see you all in the morning. Really nice campsite, Thornton Hall um, farm. 
Uh, there was me, there was a couple next door, and there was a guy who's doing uh, Land's End John Gross running it. <laughs> um, and that was it on the whole site. So I, th I think it's possibly one that isn't that well known. But if you're on the Pennine Way, um, and it's kind of yeah, a few miles before Gargrave, you can book it online. You can't actually book um, a Thornton Hall for uh, 16 quid for a backpacker. Cracking little site. Good to meet. Uh, good to meet. Good amenities. Um, yeah, we're off. I'm just going to see how far my legs take me today. Uh, come along with us. So I've come across the first honesty box of the trip and actually really well timed because I didn't have anything for lunch etc. Um, so there it is, here you are. Really well priced as well. Um, it's uh, just as you come down, I think it's called, I think it's called Cam Lane. Um, after staying at Thornton Hall Farm. So I've got a flapjack, energy drink, and a pack of crisps for later. We've just joined the Leeds to Liverpool Canal, and it's really nice. It's very picturesque, actually. Um, and I'm quite enjoying having a little bit of flat ground. You can see that guy ahead of us running. Um, lovely chap, just having a, a natter with him. He's actually running Land's End to John O'Groves and uh, taking in the Pennine Way as part of that. Bloody nutter, must be as fit as a butcher's, whatever they are, butcher's dog. <laughs> Amazing. Just had a lovely lunch. Had a uh, small baguette and um, some blue cheese. Cora loves that, so she's helped me with it. And uh, we're still in Gargrave now, but uh, I'm gonna get ready and crack on towards Malham. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to find somewhere to camp on a site. If not, I'm sure we'll find a corner of a field somewhere where it'll take us. It's a lovely day. It's not quite as sunny as yesterday, thankfully, because I'm quite burnt. So. Um, it's nice not to be getting a bit. Got loads of sunblock on though. Um, keep on saying it. Gonna crack on. It's nice to see all the side. Bit, bit like sitting in France actually, sitting here with me little bit of baguette and my cheese and the cyclists going past. Um, oh la la, bonjour. <laughs> see you in a bit. Just took a detour coming out of Gargrave because uh, the Pennine Way crossed two fields full of uh, big, big heifers, big cows, and uh, if there's a way of avoiding it, I will. So there was another path that kind of went round, and then you cut back across. Uh, might have added a mile or something on, but uh, it was worth it, especially with a dog. Cows aren't. Uh, the best species to mix with if you can help it. Just uh, making our way through a field full of cows and calves. Um, 
There's mom keeping an eye on us from a distance and there's the little calf. Let's put cover on a short lead. We walk nice and slowly and calmly through the field. No problems, thankfully. We're at Malham campsite now and uh, I've got the tent up, all pitched up. It's absolutely roasting. I mean, it's burning hot. Um, it must be in, in the 20s easily. So I'm going to get a shower and sit car in the shade for a bit. And we are off again, uh, heading to Horton in Ripplesdale. And uh, there's, there's where we were. There's our campsite. And uh, nice, nice little site it is too. Had a really good time, so uh, we're gonna crack on now, and uh, hopefully it doesn't get too hot. But uh, I think it may well. And there's Malin Tarn just coming into uh, view. We've actually taken the wrong path by mistake. I'll give you a quick look at Malam Tarn as uh, Cora takes a little dip, cool enough. It's very beautiful. Um, be a great destination in itself. You coming out now? You done? Oh, shaky bum. These uh, cliffs above Malam Tarn are quite impressive, aren't they? It's an absolutely beautiful day today, uh, really warm. It's hazed over very slightly because this morning um, the sun was burning and it was burning my neck. I had to put my towel under my cap, but uh, right now it's just warm, hazy sunshine, lovely breeze, really enjoying it. It's a little sculpture of a spider there. Oh. Like it had fangs. <laughs> and here's a wood sculpture of a hair. Details brilliant. And we're gonna go up the left hand side. Apparently there's a bit of a scramble over the top. And down into Horton in Riversdale. It's a big one, isn't it? Hi, we're in Horton in Riversdale now. knackered. <laughs> I say that at the end of every day. Um, today was a tough day though. Um, I think they all are to be honest on the, on the Penn Amway. But we're here and there we are. Tent up. Cora's had a dinner. Unfortunately there's nowhere I can buy a gas bottle so we're uh, damn gotta go to the pub for me too. All packed up and off to Hawes. Not a bad little campsite in Horton Riversdale. Um, we've got to crack on today though because there's uh, thunderstorms forecast late afternoon and uh, don't want to get caught out in that. Bit of a nightmare this morning, no gas, um, totally ran out so couldn't boil any water, couldn't have a cup of coffee or any porridge so uh, I've had a drink of water and I've had a squirt of Manuka honey, um, so it'll just have to do me. And I've got to... Hello. He's following us. Meh. 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 Nah. 
yeah there's a deer just in front of me on this path and uh, just shot up into the hills before I could get my camera going that's twice now in the last couple of days I've seen the deer on there not been quick enough on the draw just having a little break it's um, been a pleasant walk today uh, undulating on good paths <laughs> sorry uh, some poor lad um, come walking up behind us and uh, he said oh, I, I may excuse me he said um, is this the right way for the three peaks and I said well which one are you heading for? He said, I think it's Snowden. I said, I don't think it'll be Snowden, mate. I said, that's a different three peaks. I said, you got Penny, uh, Penny Gant, uh, Ingleborough and Wernside. I said, do you, do you know which one you're heading to first? He said, no. He said, uh, I'm here with me mate, but he was going too slow. I said, well, you're way off course for any of them, really. I said, y you might be best going back the way you were, you were come from. And, um, catching up with your mate if he knows the way so uh, off he went and I thought bloody hell you, you know it'd be, be so easy to get lost like I mean he looked so like he had the energy to run round three times but um you gotta know where you're going haven't you hope he's all right anyway I'm sure he is bit windy up here and uh, I just stopped for a break anyway because uh, I was starving but I've got no gas and I wasn't able to buy any sort of flapjacks or anything so I've cracked open the emergency there it is the emergency Heinz baked beans and sausages cold with a little bit of uh, chili mayo in it to give it a different flavour and you know what it's quite nice and it's perked me up and we're ready to crack onto hoes now oh my god I love the sausages in it didn't ya? is that it? you're just giving everybody a bit of a stare oh oh you're looking away sorry she's a bit aloof today Coming to sight now is uh, the town of Hawes, which uh, I think will be the first proper town we've been through. And uh, hopefully, I can stock up on some dehydrated me meals and gas because uh, apparently, there is an outdoor shop there which I made up about. safely tucked up in the B&B as the storm comes in and it's thundering and lightning outside and bucketing it down but we're nicely safely tucked up here um, cal tomorrow and we'll see you in the morning oh good morning and we're back out on the Pennine Way had a brilliant night in the B&B had a bath soaked my feet Resupplied with food, gas. Do you like my hat? Got a nice sun hat as well. Uh, we've met this young man. Do you want to go on YouTube? Can do, yeah. There you go. What's your name? George. Um, He's... Tell them what you're doing if you want. Well, uh, yeah, uh, just doing the Pennine Way. I started from home um, about just over a week ago. Did three days to get to Edale, um, and then I think I'm on day six now. Well, might be seven, kind of lost track of the days a little bit. 
Uh, but yeah, just bumped into this chap this morning and we've been having a good natter. Which makes the miles go by a bit quicker. He's playing it down, he's like a super athlete doing 25 mile days. Anyway, I'll see you soon, bye. Well, it's a bit windy, so I've got my cowboy hat on with my little bit of thing here. Um, we've just had our lunch uh, on the top of, I don't know what it's called, but it's one of the higher points of today. Um, and uh, my, oh, my pan iron weight companion has uh, carried on. He's putting in big mileage, the young man. And uh, we're off again, just had lunch. Corners helped me with my dairy lee. Lunchables, uh, which he really loved, uh, and they were all right. And it's onward we go. Uh, just talking to a lovely bloke in his 70s, uh, just recovering from uh, prostate cancer, and he's doing the Harriet Way, which sounds a fantastic, uh, fantastic trail. And uh, you probably won't be watching, but my prayers go with you, mate, and all the best for your recovery. I hope you make a full recovery. It sounds like he will, by the way. Uh, it sounds like he's doing really well. But for us, there we go. How about that? Let's just have a little stop for a minute. But I think sometimes the little dog needs some fun So we'll pick her stick up <laughs> And have a fight with it Oh she's not letting it go We're at Keld um, It's a really nice spot I'll just show you the spot It's uh, just myself and someone else there There's uh, a German guy up there somewhere Who directed me down here I think he wanted to be on his own We've got a beautiful flowing river Right down past the tent, uh, reasonably level. Uh, my tent's up. I'm quite tired, but I've had a good day, to be honest. Enjoyed my walk. Morning, and it's a wet one. I've uh, packed everything up um, from within the tent. Um, got the tent down. It's wet, unfortunately. Um, and we're just sheltering the kind of. Yeah, toilet stroke washing facilities at the campsite at Keld and I'm going to go over to the little shop and get a cup of coffee uh, before we set out on our very wet hike so you've got choice here you can go that way which will take you on the Pennine way going back or the coast to coast or we can go and this way down here along the Pennine Way to Tan House. On a hot day, what a place for a dip. Not today though.
cattle sheds. I guess if you were really stuck for a wild camp, you could get in this uh, little walled up area and uh, spend the night above Keld. pretty bleak up here, it's raining, a uh, little bit blustery and uh, just generally miserable looking but actually it's quite a nice walk as well um, I'm quite enjoying it let's have a little look at where we are right There's a lot of bogs here though, there's an awful lot of picking your way through them. Um, <clears throat> which is not as easy as it often sounds. West maps are telling me I'm about a mile and a half away now from uh, Tanhouse Inn. Still not in view though. Um, I find it quite difficult to judge distances by, by sight, if that makes sense. Although it's only a short one today, it's uh, still held its challenges. It's got a lot of uh, elevation to gain so it's quite steep and it is wet and bleak and challenging and lovely and when I get to Tan House Inn I believe they have real fires and it will make this trudge through the marshes so much more worthwhile uh, we're going to get there yet. There it is. Uh, hopefully the camera is showing. Tan House in. Just coming into view. We can get around these bugs here. thing is you can drive up here and you can go in and you can go and sit by real fire and maybe have a pint if someone else is driving but I don't think anything will be hiking up here in really foul weather getting in there freezing cold getting yourself a drink and sitting by a lovely warm fire uh, can't wait here we are Tan House Inn, highest pub in Britain and uh, as some reflection of, of how high up we are there is, uh, you can see over there the yellow snowmobile sorry, orange snowmobile and then there's a uh, snow plow with a tractor uh, hopefully today we won't have any of those worries it's just rain but uh, let's get in and get out warm mate. i need to try and make some uh, good progress the next few days because i'm right on the cusp of it um time wise i was looking at the the transport and uh, i was looking to finish around about the bank holiday weekend but from the sunday there's no bus uh, from kirky at home so I have to get a crack on and try and finish Friday, Saturday if I possibly can. Well, Friday really and then get the bus Saturday. But anyway, into this beautiful rain. Let's crack on, eh? Hmm. 
Tan, uh, Tan Hill. Um, the bog situation is dreadful. Uh, it's really slow going because you're having to try and pick your way through as best you can, which uh, is not is not easy. Um, I think I'm going to have to put my camera away now because uh, I'm going to need both hands and my poles to get through here. So what I'm doing, I'm, it's by no means perfect. I'm looking for stretches that have got heather or roots um, or particularly big clumps of grass growing in it because uh, it just gives you a little bit of buoyancy um, on the bogs. But it's not perfect because sometimes it looks like uh, you can keep up and your foot goes right down. So, got to take it easy and careful. Don't end up uh, going right down to me bloody waist or something. <laughs> There's a gang of ruffians. You can tell they're Nordic sheep by the red dots on them. It's a steep one. Go on, good girl. Oh no, <laughs> more of these birds chasing us away. <laughs> been some of the most horrible bogs I've ever um, had the pleasure of walking through. You have to just embrace it, but uh, anyway, we're going down there now towards that stone, whatever it is, this thing. Got this bridge. Mm. lovely underpass. Loads of bloody horse flies which I absolutely hate. Right there Cora. Let's get past these buggers. 
<laughs> oh, I thought one of my hairs hate them. And this is an underpass, especially made for Penang Way. <clears throat> what a shame. Have a look. What a shame. It's absolutely full of garbage everywhere. Packets, cans of coal, whatever you can imagine. I'm just standing up on a little viewing tower that we found, which is uh, the perfect place for us to have lunch. I'll uh, take a little shot of it when I get down so you can see what it's like. But uh, this is the view from it. Beautiful. And there's where we've just had our lunch. There's a uh, little bit of, I don't know, rubbish just on the top of it. And in the far corner looks like sheep dung, but it was quite, quite nice to sit on. Um, and we had a chicken cup of soup between us. Cora's got a taste for them. Uh, now we're off again. Um, I've been looking for a campsite in uh, Middleton and Teesdale because. Uh, I'm told it's not a very good area for wild camping because it's all like agricultural land even. So I've just um, made a phone call, left a message and sent a, a contact us email type thing to a campsite up there. So hopefully they'll get back. If not, I'll just turn up anyway off spec. I think it's called Dale's View, something like that. Uh, and asked them if they could squeeze me in. I'm not sure, I'll have to have a look. Oh, tent's up. Um, I've had a rather bland and tasteless, apparently, chicken curry um, from that famous um, lifestyle or whatever it is. Not, not that good, but oh, it's just starving. Another day. Um, day 14, I think, is it? Um, anyway. We're off to Dufton. It's said to be one of the most beautiful days on the Pennine Way today. Um, but it's also a long one, it's a 20 miler. So uh, I'm gonna take my time, I've started early. It's about 20 past seven and lots of breaks. And I'll get there when I get there, come on. Look at the size of this. <laughs> a dodgy little bridge. <laughs> it's that narrow, I can't actually turn round on the bridge with me pack on, so <laughs> I'm going to have to walk to the end, turn round and come back again. Here we go. No. This is a low force. Come on, this way. Come on you, this way. You've got to see this, this is great, look. Okay. Black box AV. Put it on eight. Please turn me till the message plays. About a kilometre upstream from here is the spectacular high force waterfall. 
The River Tees cascades over the Winsill outcrop and plunges over 21 metres to the river below. Please take great care whilst viewing the waterfall, especially if you have young children with you. How cool is that? If you can hear me with the noise of the water is high force the scramble to up to Moore House uh, the, oh sorry the scramble up to Moore House the reservoir is really tough um, if you've got a heavy pack because you're backpacking and a little dog it's even more difficult um, and there's a few times I was a bit worried if I'm honest but we're up here but if you're going to do it and you're backpacking don't underestimate it it is a proper scramble um, but we're up here and uh, as you can see there's the the reservoir with the the water flowing over the top and then down here and creating that beautiful waterfall we're gonna crack on a little bit and then have a rest Whew. That groan and noise you just heard was this little dog. She is shattered and so am I. In fact she's that tired that um, she, she stopped following me when I went to filter some water but let me explain. Uh, we're about only about four miles away uh, from Dufton um, and we're both, <laughs> me and the dog, we're both absolutely shattered. I couldn't take another step so I've pitched um, camp pretty much next to the uh, path. There was nowhere further away to camp, so I had no choice. I know it's a bit naughty, but we'll be gone first thing. Um, <clears throat> it's actually a lovely little place to camp, and I've just uh, done some water purifying with some really murky looking water, and it's come out the other way crystal clear, so I'm really pleased with the uh, pure clear. There's no phone signal here. That was my uh, GPS messenger going off. Um, I was just letting their family know that I'm safe. But um, just made me tea. Just wait for my chili con carne to, to soak in. I've put a little bit of extra chili sauce in it. Um, hopefully it'll have a bit more flavour. But this is where we are. Poor little dog's absolutely hammered. She's yawning. Shall we snore her head off uh, later? Hence her nickname of Snorer. Oh, she's growling at something over there. I don't know what she's growling at. I can't see anything. Maybe she can. But anyway, we're um, we're going to chill out when this one calms down. See you soon. So I've had me chili, and um, it was it was nice actually. Um, it wouldn't have been without the extra chili sauce, but it was nice. And I enjoyed it, and I put an extra rice in it. Um, and I, I mean, you just couldn't have picked a better evening to wild camp. It's a beautiful morning. A um, little bit of a breeze, but you can tell it's going to be a warm day. So today's plan, well, I think what I'm going to do is we will hike down into Dufton. Um, probably take a couple of hours, so we'll get down there just before lunch and I'll see how my legs are and we'll get something to eat and probably just stock up a little bit more again and then I'll make a decision about whether we go to Greg's Hut which will keep us on schedule or whether we spend an evening at the campsite in Dufton How about this eh? Wow! To think if I'd have pushed on a little bit further could have camped here Literally 10 minutes, never mind. It's beautiful though, isn't it? Look at the clouds in the background as well. God, blimey. 
that's just beautiful you see the cloud just kind of slowly slowly rolling up the valley oh we're actually surrounded by wild ponies <coughs> don't bark I caught us a bit freaked out by them so beautiful right come on let's leave them alone off we go come on Come on. We've just had breakfast at a brilliant, and I do mean brilliant, little cafe in Dufton, and I've been able to stock up on a few bits, and they've made me a sandwich to take up. So now we're making our way to Greg's hut and uh, if Cora decides, oh, she's having a pair, I'm going to have to go. No, she's not, she's having a wee. So why not come with us and see what adventures we have? And there we have it, the radar station on Great Dun Fell. <laughs> Cora's going over to have a nose, I think. Come on, this way. She probably thinks it's somewhere we're going to stay for the night. He's, he's a tired little dog today. She was initially full of beans, but uh, I think the walk is starting to tire her. I'm going to have to keep a close eye on the young lady. I know how she feels. Come on this way! Come on! Come on! What are you doing? Knackered. I think this is a oh, low done fell and we have come from we've done a little circuit if you kind of look right round follow the line of the hills round and down from that village and now if you can see that ridge in the distance, I think we need to get to the top of that without looking at my map right now and then turn right for want of a better way of putting it um, until we reach the bothy. Oh, this lump of stone is one of the uh, neatest signs I've seen yet for the Pennine Way. That way, up the cross fell. But is that Greg's Hort or is it? No, because on the map it shows it as being a bit further away than this. So I'm a little bit confused. I'm gonna wanna to go and investigate. So that was that that was actually um, a really robust uh, windbreak. But uh, I didn't film it because in each part of it somebody was sitting either so I didn't want to intrude. So we're now following these cairns which will take us down the other side of Crossfell and hopefully then on towards Greg's Hut uh, and this is Greg's Hut Mountain Bothy it's my first time at a Mountain Bothy and um, oh, a little look. I've actually already been oh, I've actually already been in bag off and there's no one else here at the moment um, so this is the kind of sitting room if you if you like I presume this is a picture of, of uh, John Gregory who's named after the hot oh and look there's the uh, Paul Turner's thousand mile walk uh, card the guy who's doing the thousand mile And this is the sleeping area, which I'll be honest, if we're going to be, oh, if we're going to be sharing it, I might well put my tent up outside. Cause I... Good morning. Uh, we had a great camp at Greg's Hut. It was lovely and quiet. Put the tent up uh, just outside. 
right by the running water, filtered water this morning, had a cup of coffee and we're ready to go to, is it Aniston? Um, and so that's where we're going, so uh, come along with us and see what we get up to. There's a great Dunn Hill with the golf ball. So we've kind of circled it almost, or at least done a horseshoe around it. But we're not heading that way now. We're heading this way to Anston. And I think it goes, if you can see the path going off into the distance. That's us. It's a beautiful day. It's uh, nine o'clock now, I've been going for about an hour. It's quite warm, so I'm sunblocked up, got me a uh, floppy hat on. Colours having a scratch. And I think we're both feeling good by the looks of things. This is what you, you're faced with a lot. Um, <laughs> as the path goes and it becomes a deep pond. And you think, well, I'll walk around it. Um, but actually, all round it, it bog. Oh, well, I think we've touched lucky here because, oh, done it. Right, there were stepping stones just under the water. You don't care, do you? You had a little paddle. Yes. Come on then. Wonder if we have a shop or a car. Only one way to find out, and that's to walk through the village, isn't it? Wow, just been to Gargill Village Hall, and once a month they have a cafe and it's to raise funds to repair the church. And it was brilliant, and the ladies and they were lovely. We had a bacon butty for lunch, and I've bought a couple of bits to uh, take with us. Absolutely fantastic, really enjoyed it. I was talking. Uh, to the guy as well who, who told me about this who did the renovation to Greg's hut last year I was asking how it was uh, I was just telling him it's, it's really dry and clean it seems fine and uh, he was quite pleased he was saying they were they were driving up there in a in a sort of specially adapted Land Rover so they could do the uh, renovations done a good job though even though it did stay on my tent it was more to give the the lad in there a bit of privacy and no dogs sniffing around him uh, as in Cora but anyway I am starting to waffle so let's keep on going to the little town of Alston I think it's the highest market town in England from Gargill to uh, Alston we've got this lovely walk along the river it's really picturesque there are signs saying that the footbridge is out, however, I've spoken to a number of people, three, three, four people, who've been coming the other way um, over the last few days, who tell me that, although it's saying it's closed, it's actually more than uh, usable. So I'm going to stay true to the Pennine Way and not follow the diversion. I mean, ultimately, if I can't use the bridge and I can't wade across, I'll just walk back. It's not that far, really. I could do without it, but it's not the end of the world. But we'll see, because I have a suspicion the bridge will be okay to use. But for now, I'm going to enjoy walking along this beautiful river. Come on. 
Ну. I would imagine there's a reason it's closed, but we got over okay. I'm sat in my tent at Tyne Willows Caravan Park. Um, and I guess we've been quite lucky because I turned up and uh, the lady came out and said look I'm sorry we can't take any tents the facilities aren't working there's no water toilets etc um, so I can't take any backpackers so I said okay and, you know, that's fine about it I said um, I'll, I'll keep walking and find somewhere else and uh, I think she could see that me and Cora were a little bit on the tired side and she said look she said, uh, I'm really sorry. And I said, Oh, is there any chance you could just let us pitch the tent regardless of facilities? Um, so, after a little bit of uh, um and ahhing, she agreed. And so she's let us put our tent up in the caravan park, but there are no facilities. So, I've gone up the spa, bought some baby wipes, had a wash with baby wipes, uh, bought a big um, container of water, and just had my tea and everything's okay so toilet wise there are public toilets over the way um and i think we'll be absolutely fine and i'm really grateful to the lady at the uh, caravan park for letting us stay because it would have been a couple of miles to find anywhere else if they were, were going to let us on but we're here and uh, we're chilling out and we'll be raring to go tomorrow so i will say good night for now and I will see you in the morning. And again, thank you to the lady at Time Willow Caravan Park. Well, it's a strange feeling this morning because I've decided to call it a day for now um, at Alston. Uh, the plan was to go to Holt Whistle and evaluate things there. I've been getting a bit of back pain um, for a while. I've got a bit of a problem with it, but there you go. Um, <clears throat> and I woke up this morning and I don't feel good, I don't feel I can carry on. So I'm going to get a bus to Carlisle and a train home. I suppose I could say I failed in my attempt to complete the Pennine Way in one go, but I don't feel like I failed. I'll be back in the summer and I'll complete the last five days. But I think the experience of backpacking for the last 17 days, 16, 17 days, has been absolutely brilliant and it just doesn't feel like a fail at all. I've had a fantastic time, I've met some brilliant people and it's been a real adventure for me and Cora. But all things come to an end and I'm needing to be sensible. I don't want to do myself any damage where I can't come back and get to work. Um, so we're going to go home. Cora. Come here, come here, come here, up, 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 up. Right, so, so from Cora and me, I'll say goodbye for now. I'll be making lots more camping, uh, well camping, hiking videos, and I will be back on the Pennine Way, I think August, to finish this. So stay tuned, people, and I'll see you soon.